All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's training. Um, I'm filling in for Rudy today. My name is Angie. And um, today our trainer is going to be Akshana Tarina, and she is from Rancho Biosciences. So I'm going to um, pass this over to Akshana. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Aksana, and uh, so I will go. I'm I'm going to um, introduce uh, the transmart. I'm going to uh, go over like ba basic features of this platform of uh, 16.2, uh, really specifically, and show uh, all the functionalities that we will see on this, you know, uh, available to, uh, in that platform. Um, so, if you intro introductory words about the platform, um, so the Tansmart platform is uh, an open source, community-driven knowledge management platform for translational medicine. Uh, so, um, this platform provides tools for loading a wide variety of high-content data types, chemical, biological, omic research, and uh, clinical data from a different range, range of uh, sources. So the Transmart uh, platform is managed by uh, Transmart Foundation. And you can, um, I mean, of course, you know, since you're listening. So uh, as you load the uh, uh, page of the foundation, you will find <coughs> uh, d different uh, content about the foundation as well as about the platform itself. So you can um, read uh, materials about the platform, uh, look at the different um, uh, documentations and uh, slides that uh, show more specifically uh, what is the platform about, what is it for, and how to use it, and, uh, including the today, today's presentation, so the recording will be uh, uploaded to the uh, foundation site. So if you look at this uh, uh, platform uh, uh, drop-down menu, you will see that uh, there is a lot of uh, information, including uh, uh, the uh, information how to uh, install Transmart loc locally on your computer. Um, Today, I will uh, mostly demonstrate the Transmart functionality on my, uh, on uh, the, the Rancho, Rancho's Transmart version, but I also want to, uh, to show you the, the Transmart version that is uh, uh, upload, uh, installed on the foundation, the Transmart Foundation website. So, um, so if you click, um, oh, sorry. This link. So this is the description, but basically, um, so the overview is a command line. Um, um, sorry, I, I, I um, I'm sorry. Just a sec. Um, okay, here it is. So the um, I just had it. Okay, so the link to the Transmart uh, version is this one, and um, you can type in the uh, the the user login and password, um, which, are, which are guessed in the Transmart 2016. With those, oh, I already logged in. I just used that. Um, okay, I'll demonstrate it on my one. So, uh, so this is what you usually will see uh, when you uh, click the link. And so you will enter the, the username and the password uh, in the corresponding windows. And since this is one um, 
my, my our internal, the password is different. So once you click login, the first page will open. Well, usually it's a browse, or it's just rem remembering um, all my previous um, browsing. Wow. Okay, so, so this is how the page looks on the Transmart Foundation. Um, okay, so the platform, the Transmart platform, um, is, is designed the way that it can um, st uh, store the ver various uh, type of um, data uh, and information. So as I said before, it can be clinical uh, and data, uh, the patients or in any uh, metadata for the samples, as well as the high dimensional data of wide variety, uh, like uh, expression data, the photonics, um, and so on. So um, depending on you know, on instance, uh, the, the content of uh, studies uh, uploaded can be uh, very big. And um, the, the browse window, this one that we're looking at now, helps uh, scientists to uh, to find the study uh, by the the content type in in, in um, you know any information that is inputted uh, the, to find the study that is uh, needed and basically uh, what what would we see here this is the main window where the information for the study will show up once we click on them. Uh, on the top side, on the top line, you see the different um, uh, the list of tabs that are present in uh, uh, Transmart uh, instance. So this is the first one, browse, where we uh, can you know, select the study, uh, we can look at the metadata, and we can do the file export. Any files that are associated with the studies can be uh, downloaded. Then there is an analyze window, and I will be um, to, uh, working with this window a lot today. So where we actually look at the, what what's the content of the studies, and we can do uh, various type of analysis with the data. There is also sample explorer window where you can find um, sample information by just basically. You know, selecting the filters and any um, samples that are uploaded to the transmount can be found here. Then there is a uh, tab, which is a uh, gene signature or lists. Um, here, um, uh, any scientist, any user can upload uh, <clears throat> the list of um, genes. Uh, that are you know, interested uh, and um, use it in analysis, and I will demonstrate the example uh, for you today. Um, and there is a link for the class view, and this uh, is showing anything uh, at the content, but uh, basically, if there is a, a, a class data uh, upload, uh, for the uploaded studies, it will find it on this window. Um, the next um, window, upload data. We, you, you can use this window for uploading the study and any um, um, documents. And there's also utilities um, tab where you can find help, and contact information, and what will go out of the instance. Let uh, me go to uh, another instance, the one that I'm going to demonstrate to you today. So basically, they're all the same, it's just the content is different. Um, and I'm more familiar with this instance, so I'm going to talk about this. Okay, so browse. Um, um, okay, so on the left side, in the bottom, uh, big window. Uh, there's a 
um, pro in Program Explorer window. So basically, th this is what what's the content of this particular instance. Uh, the, the studies uh, divided by the um, pathology. Um, and once we search for the study using filters, for example, the study will show up on this window. So we can, uh, to, to search uh, for the study, we can use filters over here. Um, and we can see that um, once we press it there, there's a drop down menu shows up and different uh, filters presented here. Let's take a look at the first one, which is the therapeutic domain. And uh, let's click respiratory disease. So once the filter is on, the corresponding study, folder with studies showed up. And we can take a look what's in there. So this is the study. Um, that is uh, we found for the respiratory disease. So we could also look um, uh, specifically by entering terms or gene of interest in this top panel here. Uh, so this is another way of searching for the studies. So uh, as you can see in the central um, view, the results of our um, Search shows up, and we can see that for our program, is only one study uh, uploaded in the current instance. By clicking on the name of the study, we bring the, all the information that is available uh, on the Citrus One instance. So short description, the method, uh, the associated, associated tags with the study, and as well as um, any available um, files that were uploaded for this particular study. Here we can see that there's a uh, associated analysis uh, is um, available. And uh, in, this, in this case, it's in the uh, ETL files in the associated folder. Um, so, um, Depending on what information or what files are uh, uploaded for the particular uh, study, so we will find the information on this main menu. Also, we can see the same uh, content on this left side, just as a um, like in this tree, um, and. Uh, Basically, each uh, anal analysis or each type of data has uh, its own icon, like this one, you can see. Um, this central uh, tab will bring us into the analyze view for this study. So the analyze window will open directly. And once we click on it, the um, We will see uh, the, the analyze view only for this study since we selected right for this one. And I'll just open the uh, folders. And you can see uh, that the, the different data uh, uh, was uploaded for, for this particular study. Um, let me orient you with the uh, types, data types for each, you know, that, that are present basically in um, in Transmart uh, instance. So there are three types of data. There's a high dimensional data that has an icon of this double axis. Um, there's a numerical data that has this icon one, two, three. And there is a, a categorical type of data Resonance studies uh, that's uh, marked with the ABC icon. So this is orientation for you, uh, you know, for the user, uh, what what type of data you're dealing with, and uh, depending on type of analysis, 
uh, you can use you know either one or two uh, on a, on a two or all of them but you kind of need to uh, make sure that um, you follow the guidance for the uh, selections and some, for some analysis you can use uh, you know all of them for another uh, just a you know, certain type of data. So the um, analysis window uh, you know, is, is used widely and this specific window, which is called a comparison, um, is used to create uh, cohorts for comparisons. And you know, this is a very important window and it's actually quite easy to, uh, to use once you, I guess, once you get a uh, thing of it. There are other tabs you can see here with the smaller letters. And um, I will um, talk about most of them today and um, describe you know, every button, pretty much almost every button here. Um, let's, um, let's remove the filters and see what um, the content for, of this instance. So uh, again, on the left side in the navigate terms window, uh, you, you will see the, the tree with uh, all the studies that are uploaded for this particular uh, instance. And they're organized into different uh, main folders. You can see uh, in this case, uh, they can, can be named differently depending on uh, you know, user uh, requirements or requests. So in this particular instance, we have merge studies uh, folder, we have a public studies where uh, the geo data, uh, geo studies uploaded. Uh, and you know, in here we have test studies, but also uh, many um, companies would have a private studies folder with the studies, uh, 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 non-public studies uploaded and usually for that folder uh, you know, the, the company sets up the accesses uh, to the to the scientists that uh, need access for this particular private status and the uh, transmart of course enables to um, and, and it, it enables to uh, provide access you know on you know, needed on the basis so today I will concentrate uh, my uh, demonstration on this uh, particular study, uh, uvl melanoma study, GSE uh, 27881. So this study um, has a lot of data. There, uh, there's a biomarker data, there's clinical data, and uh, subject uh, demographic and clinical uh, information and it's very um, it's quite complex and uh, very interesting to look at. So let's uh, let's practice creating um, the uh, comparisons. So um, example let's see so we have a um, clinical data with uh, metastasis flags and for example we also have the uh, data about the disease free survival uh, days um, to create the cohorts we will need to you know all we need is just just to drag the nodes into the corresponding window like this one uh, so we'll select two cohorts. One is uh, metastasis free uh, patients and another is uh, with metastasis. So now we have uh, two groups that we uh, can compare the, 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 the patient data uh, for, the, for those we can compare it in the summary statistical. Um, we can leave it like this or we can do even more uh, complex um, organization of the subsets, we can add uh, some more information. For example, um, we can select, if, if we have uh, information on a patient, patient's age, 
we can select a, a group of age for, for the, you know, this particular substance. And as you can see, so the age is a numerical uh, data type. And for the numerical, um, we have some options. So once you drag the numerical node into the subset window, the, the window pop up window will show up and it will ask you, you know, which way you want to, um, to, to choose the subset for the numerical data. Okay. No value by high low flag if you have one, or by numeric value. And this time we will use numeric value. So how do we choose? How do we find out you know, what to choose from? So to do that, we hit the show histogram button. And in here, the, the data that is present in a study for all patients in, in histogram view will show up. So here we can actually look at the patients uh, pages and select the group of interest. For example, I can uh, select patients uh, that are 60 years old or older. And so I can do it like this, like greater or equal, and then type in. And here. Okay. So now we added uh, more information for our subset one uh, based on age of the patient. Uh, the same we can do for the, uh, we need to do for the second subset, right? Um, you can see here actually for each window that uh, there's an option include or exclude. So, you know, it's kind of, you, know you, can, you can see that, you know, if, if it's include, include is uh, highlighted, that, that means the information is included into the subset. If it's exclude, then we uh, exclude the information. And let's do the exercise with the exclude right now. We'll select the same basically age group, but this time we'll do the less than 16. And hit OK. So at the end, it's basically the same information, which is selected differently. OK, so we created our cohorts. And now we can uh, compare the uh, clinical data associated with the uh, uh, dem demographic or clinical data associated with these subsets in the study. For that, we go to the summary statistics. Okay, so in summary statistics page, we uh, will see the information of, of our subsets right here. We'll see how many sub subjects in each group and then the distribution of age represented here in different format. Uh, in this study, we have information about sex, basically how many males and females in each group. And then here are our metastasis flags uh, represented here. And there are different types of analysis of age. So um, if you want to, uh, to get the information, not as a, like a summary statistics, but actually per patient, per, per uh, participant, uh, to do that, you uh, need to click the grid view button. And here you will get the table with uh, the information uh, that is correspond, corresponds to each uh, subject in the group. You can see the IDs and which subset the patient belongs to. And then we see information of sex, age. Um, and speci specifically, uh, because we chose uh, the age, it was also shown here. Um, you can add any um, information that you want uh, from the study to this table. Uh, for example, um, you know, let's try the, this, the survival uh, data. 
And you know, once you drag it in, you see that the corresponding column appear. Uh, so you can add more uh, clinical data if you want, or with more graphic, uh, you know, depending what's available on the study. So this information can be downloaded as an Excel table that you just need to press the uh, button. I think because of the connection, my computer is a little bit slower, unfortunately. Okay. Um, sorry about that, but usually, so once you hit there, the download you know, window will uh, show up and it will show you that the file is downloading and once it's available for opening, it should do that. Um, doing that now. Um, another way of exporting the data, and uh, in addition, you can also export the high dimensional data corresponding to those subjects. You, you can go to the data export window. And here you can follow the instructions, which uh, say that you, uh, you have a choice of selecting what specific uh, data you want to download. So there is a, a clinical or low dimensional biomarker data for subsets one and two. And there is a, a high dimensional data available that we can also download. Um, I can try to demonstrate it here. Hopefully it will work. So you, I selected everything and I hit the export data. Okay, so it worked. Um, so you can uh, run the export on a, in the background. So for example, I click here and um, it says that it's uh, you know, the job is, is in the background. So I can go uh, ahead and do my analysis or whatever I want to do. And the job will be, uh, once the, job, the export job will be completed, the, uh, the information will um, appeared in this export jobs uh, page. And I did it just for the training before, and you see it's completed my previous uh, uh, exporting job, but uh, this current one is uh, still going. So you can check back from time to time and see what's the status of your uh, export. So this is done. So I will cancel it uh, for now. Okay, um, let's go back and see what kind of um, analysis we can uh, do uh, here. Okay, um, let's go back to comparison window. Okay, so let's clear up all the previous uh, selections. Okay, so we are empty. Um, so for so now I will uh, you know demonstrate some of the advanced workflows for you. And for this particular uh, workflows, I will uh, in a comparison uh, page, I will drag the whole uh, study node in one of the subsets. Uh, so that means that the, you know the, the the transmart will deal with the whole subset with all information there, and uh, you know the selections, the group of comparisons. I will be uh, doing the selections in the you know, advanced workflows specifically for, for each you know, analysis type. Um, so that means that you know some of the comparisons of some of the cohorts you can uh, create in comparison uh, window, and those are specifically for summary statistics, for example. But for advanced workflow, you can do subsets here, or you can you know, go into the uh, advanced workflow and create subsets there. So once we got uh, this node all in here, go to the advanced workflow. 
Okay, so here we have a drop down menu, and you can see we have a number of uh, analysis that we can perform in Transmart. And uh, as my first example, let's do the let me show. Okay, so here we have more windows to fill out and each analysis will have its own you know, set of windows. For the most of the time, it will be dependent variable and the dependent variable, right? When we compare something. So um, for our demonstration, I will select the independent variable as well. The expression of the... We have uh, different information here. For example, the uh, information like a tag for the synthetic expression, the genus file that is known to be correlated with the uh, metastasis of the European So um, let's select the uh, levels of the synthetic expression as an independent variable, and the metastasis flag is a depend dependent variable. And let's hit the run with the visual text analysis. So here there is a results. And of course, uh, usually with the in analysis, you will get the information about p values associated with that. So uh, this is one. Let's do. Um, Another type of analysis. Let's go to box plot with ANOVA. Um, it will clear up all the fields. And again, we have the independent and independent variable uh, uh, windows. And in this case, so for independent variable, we will select actual uh, expression. For that, we will use the high dimensional data by marking data. So we will drag the whole node here, um, and we will see what is the uh, how metastasis uh, associated with the expression with the actual expression of the, uh, the gene of interest. So once we use the high dimensional node, we always need to remember to um, hit the high dimensional data button. So once we do that, the uh, pop-up window shows up with information of the platform and the marker type. And in here, um, if you, so you have options. If you use, um, if you just, you know, do nothing and hit apply selection, the uh, Transmart will use all the data available, the, the high dimensional data available, and will sort of uh, give you back the expressions um, of all the genes uh, that are in the platform, uh, limiting by first uh, whatever number you will choose uh, down there. Uh, it also, you can select actual uh, gene of interest. Yeah. Case. So you start to type in the name of the gene, for example, and the options will show up. And you actually need to hit one of the options, right? The one that you need. Uh, because um, you can, th that's one of the requirements for the uh, platform. So you need to make a choice and then apply selection. So here now you see the information of, your, uh, of the selections that are uh, now available. So basically, this is the name of the gene. And um, now it will, uh, you know, once you hit the run, the, uh, the only the, uh, information of, based on the expression of this gene only will be used. OK, to take a few moments. And now you see the results. So the expression of the gene based on uh, pending 
if it does, it spreads in the mm -hmm. represented here. And again, the p values. Okay, let's uh, let's go to see uh, another type of analysis. We have a um, survival analysis here. So, what what do you want to, for example, ask question? Why do, if if we want to ask question, uh, how um, the survival uh, this is, or, so this is survival time depends on you know, certain uh, data. And then for this case, we can select the genetic characteristics that are available in this study. And for example, the chromosome three on the destiny of one of us. And so we drag this information into the category uh, window. And for the time, we can drag the data about the disease for survival things. So the third window sensing variable um, is not available for this study, but if there is, we can use it as well. So let's hit run. And this is the results. You can see a uh, blue line uh, represents dysomy and uh, Red line is on survival graph. Okay. Um, another um, representation again about uh, the survival. Uh, can can be done using the uh, box plot again, right? So uh, we can basically present the same data in a different uh, way. And um, this time we will use uh, as independent variable, we will use the chromosome three status, isomy and monosomy, and then dependent variable, Will be disease free to model data and model it. And now the box plot survival. Okay. Um, now I'd like uh, to show you how we work uh, with the gene signature uh, and genes, uh, with set of genes in a transplant. So um, to, to be able to work with lists uh, of genes, uh, so not, not with the one and not with the, the whole uh, genome, uh, Um, so let, let's see. Um, so to create and upload those uh, lists, we use this gene signature tab. And if you look right now, we already have a few lists uh, present in, um, on this instance, and some of them there is a non-normal list and synthetic list. Um, so what are those genes? So you know, if you hit the name, you know, pop up the Google um, shop, and we can actually look at the content of this gene list. So this is a synthetic family um, genes. Um, so we can use uh, this list for our analysis, and I will demonstrate to you in a few minutes. Um, let, let me show you how you uh, upload those uh, uh, documents, those files. So to prepare the gene list, you just need to, to create a, uh, a text file with the names of the genes. 
And once you have this text file, you can upload it using this uh, new signature button. So you press the button and you need to go through a few um, pages of the uploading process and uh, the areas with asterisks, they, they have to be filled out and the others are optional. You give your list a name, hit metadata, and then you need to give some information uh, the required as a species, for example, seconds, the platform, whatever you, you, use, you use it from, uh, and um, hit next. And then um, you, you can choose the value cattle, cattle. And uh, here you actually, where you find the, the gene uh, list in the browse, right? So um, there are some samples. That, well, let's look at the samples. So here are the samples, how you prepare the uh, text files with the gene list. So it can be just names, it can be some additional information, depending what you need. So you can check it out and use it for your, um, for preparing your gene list. And here you will hit browse and you find your um, the gene list uh, of interest in, on your uh, computer, and then you will save. Uh, I'm not doing that now, but um, if we go back, so it, the, the new the new list uh, will show up in this menu, and now you can use it. Okay, if we go back to Analyze, now I will demonstrate uh, how I use this. Uh, So um, since it's already cleared up, I will drag the data in the high dimensional data uh, node to the independent independent variable. I'll hit the high dimensional data button and then, for example, start to type in the name of the list. And it's here. My so, selection. So now the information, uh, the analysis for all these genes will be shown up here. And we will compare the patients with Dyson analysis. So we'll hit run. And here are the results. So we can see uh, the name of the probes corresponding to the genes for the on our list and the information of the polynomial patients and for the maximum two subjects. And below you will have again the p-values and uh, for, for each gene on our list. That's actually where it may be useful to put the specific um, Probe, you know, gene for you know, probe name in the list. If you are sure that you know that um, which platform you use, um, otherwise you know, just to look it up. So let's uh, look at this, some more uh, types of analysis here. So we have a 
correlation analysis, for example, here. Um, but with that, actually, for this type of analysis, we need to go back to comparison to create the, the cohorts there. So let's see uh, what information we can use. For example, uh, um, no, actually, no, what? I think we can put that we can do. And, um, and drag so so we can drag two numerical for example um, uh, data types in here and see the correlation for example the size of the tumor and how it correlates with the survival um, patient survival so we have two numerical data here and we choose the correlation type, for example. So this is the result. Um, actually, what I uh, also wanted to uh, tell you, but I to go back to the, oh, no, actually, the next one. So the next, I would like you to uh, to uh, demonstrate uh, a few analysis with the heat maps. So um, we have a uh, Transmart has a ability to show the heat map analysis as well as the uh, marker, for example, selection analysis. And let's try this one. Um, so, but for those, we need we need to go to back to comparison window and to create those uh, cohorts. So let's do um, the cohort. Let's create cohorts based on the uh, chromosome three uh, genetic status. So we will we'll use one as and one subset and then, so we created those two cohorts and we compare them. Uh, and let's go to advanced uh, analysis and select marker selection analysis. So um, here in the variable selection, we'll drag the high dimensional data. And um, again, so we need to hit the high dimensional data button and in this case we'll use the null. And um, here we can limit how you know what what will be the output, how many uh, probes uh, will show up in a diagram. And um let's do a few this time so I can get too long. You know, the, the bigger the number the longer it will take. So you still you, you you see that you still have this information about your uh, selections for the cohorts. And once the analysis is done, we'll see the results. So this is the results of our um, analysis of the 
micro selection and it's kind of too big for our view but we can um, uh, click on it and uh, picture will open in a separate view so you can actually save it uh, on your local computer as, as this picture um, So this is the result and there's some specific table with specific values below. And the subsets you can see they are separated by color. So let's just try one more. Try the let's try the treatment. If not analysis. Um, and again. So we have our cohort so created in a comparison window and those are the cohorts. Um, let's drag the, the whole high dimensional node in there. But this time, let's choose, um, again, the list. We can choose another list that we have uh, uploaded uh, to the instance. And this one is uh, one only list and my selection. So um, let's we can reduce the process. Okay. So the, the data only for those lists uh, for this list will show up. So let's hit run. So basically as you can see um, for this uh, analysis so this is a, uh, the list of the genes that we have in our monoma list. Two cohorts, orange and green. And this is the revision. And again, you can click on it and um, it will show up. Um, so, what I was going to say is that um, basically, on um, for this type of analysis, you can use the whole uh, genome, uh, the whole platform. The, the list, if you have it uploaded in, in the gene signature page, or uh, you can type in um, like a, a gene name here, if you saw, and uh, to, to get the uh, analysis. So, in uh, instance uh, 16.2, the new uh, feature was added, and it's called Smart On. And this, um, this is basically another uh, way of, uh, you know, of approaching the analysis. And some people would find it easier and more interactive. And in this case, you know, one of the advances that you can use um, uh, you know, several genes by just typing them in one of the another. So you don't have to to use the uh, prepared gene signature list. So you can see that here on this uh, tab, there is, um, again, the drop-down menu for available analysis. And you can see the same, basically, uh, similar analysis, the box, box plot, uh, workflow, the correlation, and, for example, the heat map that I will show you now. So once you selected the heat map, again, the windows pop up, uh, show up the windows that you can fill out. And again, you can drag the, the high dimensional node in here. And uh, there are options that you can add uh, numerical or categorical var variables if you want to add those to the analysis. And then here uh, below, uh, there's an area they, where you can uh, type in the genes, specific genes, right? So let's, for example, uh, select some of them. Uh, for example, this one, then you can type more, you can select this one, and you can see that they are showing up uh, one after another. So we can uh, type in as many as you want, uh, just on the flow, and then uh, you need to hit the fetch data button. It will take a minute to collect the data. And then it will uh, 
prompt you to uh, go to preprocess or run an analysis file. And you can see those two tabs up here. So the preprocessing, if you want to do something with probe, you can aggregate the probe, or you can go straight to run analysis. And again, there are some options, and you can uh, select what options you want from here. And once you're done, you hit create the plot. And now you see the plot. So it's a little bit different. Uh, actually, in this view, you can uh, rock, uh, uh, any of the these little squares, and it will give you the information of what is this probe, what is the patient, and you know, the value of this score. Uh, this score. And um, so this way you can sort of, you know, look at the precise leakage uh, data point. So this is like an addition, additional feature for this 16.2 uh, transform. So um, I think so. I think this is pretty much uh, all the basic features that I wanted to uh, show you today. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I will be posting this recording on the website, and we will see you next month. Thank you.